1770 a 1825, o autômato do barão von Keppelen, o turco, visitou as cortes reais da Europa. O próprio Napoleão jogou contra o turco em 1809 e perdeu. O imperador não gostou, não estava acostumado a perder. E não conseguia compreender como uma máquina de jogar xadrez pudesse vencê-lo. O mistério continua. Kasparov e a máquina. Nova York, 2003. Looks different. We had a big table here. Was with computer, all the equipment. Uh, uh, yeah, that was it was quite different. That's yeah. it's, it's very hard to reinstate these memories. Nearly six years ago, probably this is sort of a mental block. You don't want to remember. <laughs> you don't want to remember. You don't remember. <laughs> and uh, there was. It was quite a painful time, so that's why I can hardly reconstruct the scene, the scene of the crime. <laughs> we had a table where you know we could put one computer, and then my coach was sitting with another laptop. So and then we had a chess set, and it was pretty long. So here, so we just you know occupied the center of the room. Those were not happy days. It's from day one we had so much tension. What are you doing? I, I think I felt like you know, we were a bunch of amateurs, challenging, challenging the, the terrible, faceless monster. O barão von Keppelen apresenta a maravilha do século, o enxadrista autômato que vencerá todos os jogadores, seja quem for. Call it a blow against humanity. After six games over nine days, Deep Blue, the IBM computer, beat Garry Kasparov. 
considered to be the best chess player in the history of the game. And whoa, deep blue Kasparov. The great Russian champion was not a graceful loser. Moscou, outubro de 2002. Grandmasters, there are many, many hundreds of them now, and there are a few grandmasters who are so far superior to their colleagues that they should introduce something like super grandmaster. And one could argue that Kasparov also needs a category all to himself. I think we should call the ca category Kasparov, just, you know, it's Kasparov. I think Gary has now established beyond any doubt that uh, he's the strongest player in history. We've debated this for many years, but we debated it when he was 30. Now at 40, to increase his playing strength means he is the strongest player ever in the history of the game. He's been on the top of the chess world for 15 years now, or 16 or 17, I don't know. He's always been substantially ahead of everyone else. So, it's a Kasparov. It's the central chess club of the Soviet Union. The legend says that it was Khrushchev himself who signed this building to the chess players. And since the uh, uh, late 50s, this uh, building, this is old mansion of the 19th century, sort of a palace, um, uh, became a cradle for uh, uh, Soviet chess. Uh, the Soviet chess department, the sports committee chess department, was uh, always located in this building. So that's why the chess officials, they were sitting around the, this building and uh, many important decisions regarding number of players were made here. I cannot survive if I feel I'm in fetters. So that's why, for me, it was virtually impossible to play under the strict rules of the Soviet regime. I started with a couple of colleagues building Deep Blue right from the very beginning. Um, we came to IBM in 1989, and over the next several years, we built a series of machines which eventually culminated in, in the Deep Blue system. I focused particularly on the evaluation part of Deep Blue. That is, the part of Deep Blue that allows it to distinguish what's good about a position and what's bad about a position and come up with a numeric value that tells you how good the position is. I think fairly early on it was clear that faster computing led to better performance in chess programs. And as programs got faster and faster, we started to think maybe if it was this fast, it would be enough to beat the world champion. This is the die that's designed 1985 to 1986. It's essentially a silicon chess board. It's a uh, single chip chess move generator, about 36,000 transistors, and generate about 2 million moves per second, maximum throughput. Guaranteed not to exceed that. And who designed it? I designed it. They asked me if I would be interested in, uh, in you know, helping to train the, uh, the, the program to play against Kasparov. I thought, well, that's a great opportunity, you know, so I, I couldn't let that one go by. So that's how I got into the computer world. <laughs> 